this is Tulika Banerjee from Forensic Science Unit, SGTB Khalsa College, University of Delhi, presenting this module on behalf of Professor Nisar Ahmed, PBGM College, Bhopal. I am delighted to present this lecture on caste, which is taught in BA second semester. Before we start our chapter with the introduction of this chapter, look, uh, let's look at the other modules we will study in this chapter. Module number 1, what is caste system? Module 2 is regarding classification of caste. Module 3 is regarding ills of caste system and constitutional provisions. And module 4 is regarding the conclusion. There are two main forms of social stratification, caste and class. Both are the agencies of social mobility and selection. They decide largely the position that a man occupies in society. The range of one's social contracts is almost fixed by one's status in society. Caste is associated above all the cultures of the Indian subcontinent. The term caste itself is not an Indian one. Coming from the Portuguese, caste meaning race or pure stock. Indians themselves have no single term for describing the caste system as a whole, but a variety of words referring to different aspects of it, the two main ones being Varna and Jati. The Varna consists of four categories, each ranked differently in terms of social honour. Below these Four groupings are the untouchables, those in the lowest position of all. The jati are locally defined groups within which the caste ranks are organized. The caste system is extremely elaborate and varies in its structure from area to area, so much so that it does not really constitute one system at all but a loosely connected diversity of varying beliefs and practices. But certain principles are widely shared. Those in the highest one, the Brahmins, represent the most elevated condition of purity, the untouchables, the lowest. The Brahmins must avoid certain types of contact with the untouchables, and only the untouchables are allowed physical contact with animals or substances regarded as unclean. The caste system is closely bound up with the Hindu belief in rebirth. Individuals who fail to abide by the rituals and duties of their caste, it is believed, will be reborn in an inferior position in their next incarnation. The Indian caste system has never been completely static. Although individuals are debarred from moving between caste, whole groups can change and frequently have changed their position within the caste hierarchy. The concept of caste is sometimes used outside the Indian context, where two or more ethnic groups are largely segregated from one another and where notions of racial purity prevail. In such circumstances, there were strong taboos preventing intermarriage between the groups concerned. When slavery was abolished in the southern states of the US, the degree of separation between blacks and whites remained so strong that some have used the term caste to refer to the stratification system. The concept of caste has also been applied to South Africa, where strict segregation was until recently maintained between the blacks and whites. An intermarriage or sexual contact between them was forbidden by law. Caste or Varna system is a purely Indian phenomenon and especially it is practiced among Hindus, though with time as far as India is considered, 
other religions such as Islam, Sikhism, Christianity, etc. also adopted some trappings of it. As already been explained earlier, it is much like the western concept of racism, it can also be compared with the class system of European continent. Class system is also a discriminatory system. Class system is based on many different factors such as wealth, power, prestige, ancestry or birth, religion or occupation. Generally, class is not hereditary while caste is. But similar to the caste system, class system also differentiates or stratifies different social groups on the basis of their standing in the society. Caste system is a unique type of class system in which the social ordering is done on the basis of birth. This type of system exists in Indian subcontinent only. Unlike class system, caste system does not allow any person to move from one caste to another. There is strict restriction on interdining and intermarriage among people belonging to different castes. One of the main characteristics of caste system is endogamy, that is marrying into their own caste. It is very formal, rigid and a well defined system. That is why Varnas or caste are known as closed classes. It is a closed system of stratification in which almost all children end up in the same section of society as their fathers. Origin of caste system in India There is no certain date when the caste system came into existence in India. But according to the Manu Smriti, the caste system in India was in the beginning a system of prescribing codes of conduct for people to suit their requirements of their occupation. Thus, it was based on their occupation. But gradually, the occupation of people became hereditary and the caste system also changed from occupation to birth and heredity. Now, caste of a person got fixed at the time of his Such people in position of power like to perpetuate their strategic position by means of force or ritualistic customs. 
As far as social stratification is concerned, the Brahmins, generally priests and scholars are at the top. Next strata consist of the Kshatriyas, the ruling class and soldiers. Usually the Kshatriyas collaborated with the Brahmins as they governed over their empire. A Kshatriya is branded by physical and martial strength. Next in the hierarchy are the Vaishyas or merchant class. It was the duty of the Vaishyas to ensure the community's prosperity through agriculture, cattle rearing, trade and business. The Vaishyas were considered to be weak in comparison and they were exploited for by their rulers. The luxurious lifestyle of the ruling class and wars etc. were maintained at the cost of Vaishyas. Then there were Shudras, the lowest in four Varnas. They are labourers, peasants, artisans and servants. Shudras were believed to not have any special abilities and were considered only capable of serving as slaves to the upper three classes. They were having no rights or privileges and were not permitted to perform any sacrifices or home, read or learn the Vedas or recite the mantras. They were also not allowed even to enter into temples and to, pass, and to participate in any religious rituals. These discriminatory practices against so-called Shudras are still prevalent in our society in large measure. Apart from these four Varnas, another section was there which was considered lowest of them all. They were untouchables, the outcasts, because they were not considered part of any of the said four Varnas. These untouchables were there to perform such occupations that were considered unclean and polluting such as scavenging and skinning dead animals. These were the most discriminated and exploited ones. All the four Varnas maintained distance from them. And it was considered as sin even if a shadow of an outcast lied on anyone. Let us look to some of the definitions of caste. When a class is somewhat hereditary, we may call it caste, as given by C. H. Cooley. A caste is an endogamous group or collection of endogamous groups bearing a common name, membership of which is hereditary, imposing on its members certain restrictions in the matters of social intercourse, either following a common traditional occupation or claiming a common origin and generally regarded as forming a single homogeneous community, as given by E. A. H. Blunt. A social group having two characteristics. First, membership is confined to those who are born as members and includes all persons to be born. And second, the members are forbidden by an inexcorable social law to marry outside the groups, as given by Ketkar. Caste is a collection of families, group of families bearing a common name, claiming a common descent from a mythical ancestor, human or divine, professing to follow the same hereditary calling and regarded by those who are competent to give an opinion as forming a single homogeneous community, as is stated by Risley. It may be defined as an endogamous group or collection of such groups bearing a common name, having the same traditional occupation, claiming descent from the same source and commonly regarded as forming a single homogeneous community, as stated by Gate. 
when status is wholly predetermined so that men are born to their lot without any hope of changing it then the class takes the extreme form of caste as stated by mcclever and page caste is a system of stratification in which mobility up and down the status ladder at least ideally may not occur as given by green a caste is merely a rigid social class in which members are born and from which they can withdraw or escape only with extreme difficulty it is a type of a stratification system which is most rigid in matters of mobility and distinctness of status as given by lundberg castes started as natural division of occupational closes and eventually upon receiving the religious sanction become solidified into the existing caste system the caste system comes into being when it becomes an integral part of religious dogma which divides the people into superior and inferior groups with different responsibilities functions and standards of living as given by h main caste is that extreme form of social class organization in which the position of individuals in the status hierarchy is determined by descent and birth as is stated by anderson and parker caste is a closed social group as defined by d n majumdar and t n madan some of the prominent characteristics of the caste system are first caste is innate its first distinguishing feature is its absolute rigidity and immobility a man dies in the same caste in which he is born and it is a caste that determines his status in life restriction on food habits the second element of caste is its prescription of certain kinds of food for different castes for instance a brahmin is not permitted to eat non vegetarian food kshatriyas and vaishyas are also forbidden to take certain kinds of foods such as beef but shudras have the liberty to consume any type of food caste is endogamous endogamy is the most important element of caste system westermark considers it to be a chief characteristic of the caste according to this each one must marry within his own caste and within the subgroup if there be any in that caste the system has become so rigid that intercaste marriages have become too difficult because two persons belonging to two different castes different food habits cultural habits etc the violation of the rule of endogamy that is marrying outside the caste would mean ostracism and loss of caste then is hierarchical social structure the caste structure of the society is hierarchy or system of subordination held together by the relations of superiority and inferiority at the apex of which are brahmins and at the lowest rung are the shudras the relative position that a person occupies in the caste hierarchy is mostly determined by its relations to the brahmins the highest caste is that from whom a brahmin will accept food the next is that caste from whom the three twice born caste brahmins kshatriyas and vaishyas may accept food at the lowest are those castes from whom the higher caste cannot accept any food or drink not even they may be touched without contamination 
hence their hierarchy. The Brahmins enjoy a number of social and religious privileges while they suffer a series of disabilities. Occupation is fixed. Every caste regards some occupation as its own hereditary and exclusive calling and tries to debar the others from exercising it. The original and exclusive occupation of Brahmins was to perform priestly duties. The Kshatriyas and Vaishyas were to occupy themselves with defense and commerce and the functions of Shudras were to serve the other three castes. In course of time, many adjustments and changes have however been made in these rigid pursuits of occupations. Members of a particular caste are expected to follow the caste occupation. The abandonment of heredity occupation is not thought to be right. No caste would allow its members to take to any occupation which was either degrading. Some occupations are considered to be superior and sacred while certain others degrading and inferior. For a long time, occupations were very much associated with the caste system. Each caste had its own specific occupation. The caste members were expected to continue the same occupations. Occupations were almost hereditary. Individual talents, aptitudes, interests, initiatives, abilities and achievements were neglected. But agriculture, trade and labouring in the field were thrown open to all the caste. At the same time, no caste would allow its members to take up to any profession which was, which was either degrading or impure. Now I would like to have a brief discussion about social structure and the cultural aspects of the caste system. The nature of caste system in India can be studied as a social structural system and as a cultural system representing the unique feature of Indian cultures. Social structural aspects. The caste system is a hierarchy of values in terms of the concept of purity and impurity. It is organized as a characteristic hereditary division of labor. It is committed to organic coordination with the larger communities. Dumont, the French sociologist, used the term homo hierarchy meant for the minority opposition and mutual repulsion in the inter-caste relationship. There is a lot of cooperation especially in the socio-religious lines between various castes. Next comes the cultural aspects. The cultural or symbolic system of caste has some important things. A hierarchy of values in terms of the concept of purity and impurity, hereditary transmission of psychological traits within the caste groups, the concepts of karma and punarjan giving one's attitudes and ways of life, commitment to caste occupation of caste style, tolerance of different styles of life of other castes. Social stratification on the basis of caste is the main reason behind various types of exploitation against the so-called lower caste, especially those described as Shudras and the untouchables. From the beginning of the system, Shudras and untouchables were treated as slaves by so-called upper caste. They were allowed only to do menial works and all the lowly works but they were given no powers or privileges. All the privileges were for Brahmins and Kshatriyas. All the leadership position in religion, polity, economy or society was assumed 
and taken hold of by two of the so called upper caste. Their political or social influence was always minimal. However, there were various social reformers like Raja Ram Mohan Roy who devoted their lives for the upliftment of these downtrodden people. Various reform movements were there to abolish the caste system. But it was so ingrained in our social fabric that it was next to impossible to change the situation on ground. Thus, when India got independence and the constitution was being framed, our founding fathers were of the opinion that such provisions should be added in the text which would lessen the ills of caste system and bring about equality in social field. Social justice was one of the main objectives of our constitution. Let us now see what our constitution says about the caste system. Constitutional provisions. First of all, the preamble to the constitution envisions India as a nation where socio-economic and political justice is there, where there will be equality of status and opportunity and where dignity of the individual is secured. The constitution guarantees equality before law in article 14 and enjoins upon the state not to discriminate against any citizen on grounds of caste stated under article 15 1. Untouchability is abolished and its practice in any form is forbidden as stated under article 17. The constitution mandates that no citizen shall on grounds only of caste or race be subjected to any disability and restriction as stated under article 15 point number 2. It empowers the state to make provisions for reservation in educational institutions stated under Article 15, 4th and 5th and in appointments for posts in favour of SCs stated under Article 16, 4, 16, 4A, 16, 4B and Article 335. Reservation of seats for SCs in the Lok Sabha is provided under Article 330, in the state assemblies under Article 332 and in the local self-government bodies under Articles 243D and 340T. Further, the constitution guarantees protection from social injustice and all forms of exploitation as stated under Article 46. In the following section, we will look into the various acts to prohibit caste discrimination as provided by the Constitution of India. Acts to prohibit caste discrimination. To fulfill the constitutional mandate, several other acts were also passed in the parliament to end the exploitative and discriminatory practices against the so-called lower caste. A few of those legislations are the Untouchability Offences Act of 1955 renamed as Protection of Civil Rights Act in the year 1976 to check and deter atrocities against SCs, the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes. Prevention of Atrocities Act 1989 has also been enacted. Recently, the government has introduced a bill in Lok Sabha in the name of prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and their rehabilitation bill of 2013, which aims to prohibit the employment of manual scavengers, the manual cleaning of sewers and septic tanks without protective equipment and the construction of insanitary latrines. The bill seeks to rehabilitate manual scavengers and provide for their alternative employment. 
It is another social welfare legislation whose objective is to bring manual scavengers or caste valmikis or bhangis in social mainstream and to protect them from various socio-cultural and economic discrimination. Module 4 Conclusion Caste system in India is so rigidly deep rooted in its socio-cultural and religious life that it now almost has God given approval behind it and anything against or in opposition of the system is considered to be a sin or disrespectful to God. But in reality it is no godsend virtue to be followed by the people. It has had several exploitative and discriminatory effects on our social order throughout the ages. As a byproduct, caste system has given several other social ills to the society such as untouchability. The system is still continuing in India as a well established and sacred customary rule and is followed by almost everyone regardless of their economic or social status. Though the younger generation is discarding such social norms, but still the system is well entrenched in our socio-religious beliefs. India cannot become a truly modern country in the 21st century if it fails to abolish this discriminatory practice based on caste. The biggest problem in abolishing and removing this menace from the society is the in general social acceptability of the same. Until and unless this changes, no hope is there. Because law can provide protection from exploitation, but it cannot bring attitudinal changes in so called upper caste. The young and modern generation is perhaps the only hope in bringing about the real meaning of social justice in our country. Dear students, this is the end of our conclusion in which we have recapitulated our chapter about the caste. I hope you all have enjoyed this lecture. I hope you all have understood the underlying concepts of this chapter. Do keep in mind what we discussed today. I will be back with one more lecture in the series. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for MCQ, quizzes, LORs, etc. Make sure you revise the modules frequently so that you master the topic well and take up the exercises. Thank you for your time today. I will see you in the next lecture. Keep learning and goodbye.